Welcome back to the Authentic Christian Podcast. I'm Aaron, this is Tucker, this is Scott, and today we're going to talk about addiction. All right, so in today's episode, we're going to talk about addiction. We're going to talk about what addiction is, different types of addiction, and hopefully some ways that if anyone out there watching is struggling with addiction, we're going to talk about we all have struggled with different types of addiction in our life, and this is sort of what we've done to get help and that sort of thing. So hopefully it'll be beneficial to you. And like we talked about even before we started, some people are afraid to talk about their past because they're afraid if I tell somebody something I struggle with in my past, they're going to think, wow, I can't believe. And to be honest with you, I really don't care because yeah. I know from experience, in fact, that there are people that are struggling with some of the same stuff that we've all three struggled with. I'm not going to just keep it quiet and make you think I have a, I'm perfect. Yeah. Therefore, I'm not doing this for them. No. Yeah. That's not no, the person I'm no. worried about. The person that's going to say, yeah. wow, I can't believe he used to be that way. I'm not really concerned with that person because yeah. they got bigger mm. issues. But I, we're going to talk about things that we've struggled with. So if somebody out there is struggling with it, we can hopefully help them. Yeah. Because I mean, that's the hope. Yeah. We're all humans. We've all messed up in the past and we're going to mess up in the future. But we're trying to do what we can to get everybody to heaven. Okay. So um, let's start off with a definition. Scott, how would you define addiction? Now, a lot of people have different definitions and some people are really touchy about the definition of this, but <clears throat> let's just, we're just three guys talking. What would you describe uh, as an addiction to something or the word addiction? How would you define it? Uh, the context of what we're going to talk about today, I'd say addiction is when you lose your sobriety for pleasure. It's not medicinal. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of people that argue the semantics of the word addiction. Well, I can be addicted to sugar. Well, you can. That's not really what we're talking about. Yeah. Talk about losing sobriety. Yeah. Yeah, losing your ability to critically think, to make some judgment calls. Uh, and you're doing that so that you can enjoy the pleasure of whatever the substance is or the action is. Um, and it's, it's not a medical thing. So that's important, too. We'll clarify that because there's a lot of drugs out there that can cause you to lose your sobriety, but you may need those for the moment Yeah, because it's a treatment for some disease that you're going through. Well, what you I think you touched on something really key, that there are some things that can be they're medicinal you know, prescriptive. That's different than using something for recreation. You know, I think of first Timothy five twenty three. when you look yeah. at a Bible, Bible precedent for this, where Paul writes to Timothy, first Timothy five twenty three, drink, uh, no longer drink water. Some versions say some, it's an elliptical statement, which mm -hmm. means basically some say no, no longer drink only water, but also but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. This was a medical use of alcohol. This wasn't, Hey, just social drinking, like First Peter four three, I think talks about not doing. This is talking about a medicinal use of alcohol. Yeah. It's the same way with like prescription pain pills, right? Like when I had my wisdom teeth, I forget, I don't know what they, I don't know enough about that, but they gave me some pills for, uh, for me to sleep while I healed for pain. I do not believe that that is wrong to use those. Now, if after I finished and I'm all healed up, and I thought, hey, let's take those for fun, yeah, then that would be me, basically. Um, destroying my sobriety oh, yeah. for entertainment. So I think that you made a great classification about the difference between medicinal and just for like entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what types of addiction do you guys want to talk about today? What, um, I mean, there's lots of different ones, but what yeah. are some of the ones you guys want to talk about today? Well, we wanted to also say that we're not, we're no, we're not a doctor. So yeah, we're, we're not, yeah. three guys talking. Yeah. You can email yeah. us and we can send you some suggestions or recommendations, yeah. but yeah, if you want professional want help, you yeah. can send us an email and we'll connect you with professionals. We're not claiming we can, to be certified yeah. or anything like that. We can tell doctors. you about what happened for us and sure. what mm -hmm. we did and what we went through. We can tell you about uh, some things that the Bible has to say about it, mm -hmm. but we're not pretending to be licensed counselors. Sure. Definitely. Exactly. So. And I guess some types are, we wrote down, wrote down a list, alcohol, drugs, porn, lust, anger. I'm sure, sure there's some other ones we could deal yeah. with. Chemical sure. addiction, okay. habitual mm -hmm. addiction. And we'll like start sensual with sensual addiction. Okay. Let's start with the first one. You said chemical. Yeah, chemical. Habitual and sensual. Start like with drug chemical. use, alcohol, you know, something like a chemical that can uh, control your life. You know, these are your prescription pills, your street drugs, cocaine, heroin, uh, marijuana, ecstasy, et cetera. Uh, of course, we mentioned the prescription pills. One of sure. the things you mentioned you had for your teeth, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, wisdom teeth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's probably... Thorotab or hydro something, hydrocodone yeah. or something Probably. like that. I think that. that may have been it. Yeah, those things, they, they can become very addictive. So we'll, we'll want to talk about that. I, I have a lot of experience with that side of things. Okay. Uh, personally, I can probably talk more about that. And I've got family that struggle with it. I've had friends that struggle with that. Friends that have passed away who have died from those things. Yeah. Um, mm. I've probably come close to that several times in my yeah. life. So 
Uh, I'll talk about some of that, I guess. Yeah. That's one thing I think that's really cool, too. We talked about another episode. I kind of alluded to it. But sometimes people get this idea, especially if maybe a non-Christian is watching. You think that Christians think they're perfect. Uh, there are some Christians out there that think they're perfect. Um, Jesus addressed those as hypocrites. Um, yeah. So we all have issues. This is a passage that I really love. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. I'm going to read this list. Okay, These are all people that became Christians. Do, not, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Now, he's going to list a, a lot of different sins. Mm-hmm. Fornicators, all right, that's actually the Greek word pornea. That's where pornography comes from, mm. um, the Greek oh. word pornea. So fornication is what it means. So neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, sobriety, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. So he says this whole list, these people will not inherit the kingdom of God unless... They repent, they're baptized, verse 11. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified. So he says, all of you in the church in Corinth, this one church, all of that, those different types of previous lifestyle people are in this church. And so that's the neat thing about the church is you're going to have a lot of people who used to struggle with this stuff, which I think is beneficial. I mean, yeah. like I said earlier, some people don't want to talk about this. Which, man, if I talk about <laughs> I used to struggle with this, someone's going to think, I can't believe that person but it's like, I mean, Scott's going to say, look, these are things that I did in my past. Yeah, that- yeah I'm a Christian, not because I think I'm perfect, like That's you right. said, but because right. I know that I'm not, because That's right. I know that I wasn't. Yeah, right. amen. Yeah. So, um, okay, so let's talk about, you know, I know there's a there's a preacher named Robbie who I watched um, an interview he did, and he talked about how he got into, is in middle school. It was like seventh and eighth grade, which to me, I was like, wow, that's so young. It's but like in 12, 13. Yeah, like yeah, 12 and 13. And he basically got into it at school. It was he went over to a friend's house after a football game, and um, he was in seventh or eighth grade, and that's when he got introduced to. First, it was alcohol, and then alcohol led. You know, people sometimes laugh about this idea of a gateway drug. They're like, mm-hmm. "Oh, that's," but no, it's it's legit. And he even talks about this from experience. It started with alcohol for him. That led to uh, marijuana. He he then said that the marijuana led him to hanging out with a different type of person. That then led to where he was doing methamphetamine. He was addicted to meth. And so with those sorts of things, it never there are some drugs like heroin. I've had a couple of members of my extended family that have died from heroin overdoses, um, multiple. But the problem with that is it never starts. It doesn't r- normally start there. It normally starts with a gateway drug, yeah. and you start hanging out with different people, and it progresses. <clears throat> I mean, from your experience, you share only as much as you feel comfortable with. Um, how, how did it happen for you? Like what... Um, what were some of the things that maybe dro- drove it? Was it trying to fit in? Was it peer pressure? Was it? Well, <clears throat> the earliest memory of me trying anything that was um, a chemical substance would have been cigarettes when okay. I was really young. Okay. Like, I don't know, nine, okay. something like that. Okay. Tried to, you know, my parents smoked when yeah. I was growing up, still some cigarettes. Yeah. Go smoke them out in the treehouse. Yeah. You know, uh, you see that in a lot of older movies, too, yeah. especially when they're set back in the day. Like yeah. kids stealing the cigar even and all that, yeah. and they're out there pretending to be adults. and they're smoking. Yeah, the, yeah that's what I did. Uh, by the time I was 12, I was around people who were smoking weed. Yeah, I didn't try it at that time. I waited a little bit longer, maybe when I was 14, 15. Yeah. Uh, I started drinking a lot. I remember when I was 15, uh, we used to drive. I'm, I'm originally from the Montgomery area okay. in Alabama. We would drive up to Atlanta Highway in Montgomery. We'd drive up and down that road all night. You know, that was the thing to do is yeah. just, to, you know, hang out. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, at, at different times, we'd meet up with people, and we'd get together. We'd have the parties on the field and all that, and uh, we'd have tons of beer. And that's that's really where that started. So it started with cigarettes, then it then went to beer. And then uh, shortly after, I started smoking weed. Uh, marijuana, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. you want to call that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you said gateway drug. Well, I don't know if it's really the drug itself that leads to the other things necessarily. It may or may not be, but yeah. I think more than anything, it's like you said, it leads you to be in contact with other people mm-hmm. because it's an illegal substance. That's going to put you into a group of people now that have illegal connections or not that the connection is illegal, yeah. but that they have connections to people who can get them illegal substances. Yeah. So by being in that group, you're now in a place where you have access to the yeah. other drugs yeah. and marijuana is typically more easy to gain access to. So you start with that. It gets you into that group because 
most people don't think it's a big deal. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of states legalizing it now. They're know. treating it just like alcohol. So uh, you get into that group, that gets you the connection for the other thing, and then you yeah. might as well try it. I mean, you're curious. Everybody else is there doing it, and they're like, hey, you want to try it? Yeah. Why not? And you're trying to fit in. Yeah. So that's the attitude. I mean, well, why not? Mm-hmm. You know, you know, like, you- I've tried alcohol. I've tried weed. They both felt great, yeah. right? No, let nobody tell you the drugs don't feel good. Sin that's feels right. good. That's right. That doesn't mean it's right, and that doesn't mean it won't destroy you. Yeah, yeah. There is a temptation to it. If it didn't have that appeal, nobody would do it. Well, and you don't you don't see that sort of stuff in the short term. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's that's really the like these all the TV commercials about alcohol and stuff like that. They never really show you the behind the scenes picture. They only show you, you know, like my wife and I will joke where there'll be like this beautiful like group of friends that are all athletic and fit, and they're like running through the woods, and then at the end it's like a Corona commercial. I'm like, what in the world does that have to do with it? It's just basically trying to paint this image that, hey, yeah. your Normal, life will be perfect. healthy, good people do this so you can too. Yeah. And it won't make you a and bad it person. Won't, and it won't wreck your life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's precisely it. Yeah. And that's it, the way everybody likes to paint the picture, picture about weed too. Like, yeah. it's not a big deal. Helps you to feel good. Everybody does it. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't even be illegal. Oh, it's natural. God made it. Well, look, God made a lot of things. God made the poppy plant that we make heroin mm-hmm. from. That doesn't mean that he intends for you to go out and get and smoke s- it. smashed and exactly. hammered shooting yeah. heroin. Yeah. I mean, that's just a ridiculous argument. Yeah. So. Well, that's not the natural use for it. Right. Rolling it up and smoking it. I yeah. mean, and you got the tobacco plant. Well, the tobacco plant. Yeah, but is that the natural use for it to roll it up and smoke it? I mean, yeah. you think I've actually heard a lot of people like for – um like anxiety. And I think a lot of it's like tactic, right? The devil never mm-hmm. comes, he's never super open about the way he does things. Yeah. But I've heard people he's say smart. like, yeah, he's smart. I've heard people say, well, if you have anxiety at a party, well, just take some MDMA, you know, that'll help loosen you up or alcohol, you know, <laughs> help loosen you up. That doesn't make it right. Yeah. You know? It'll help loosen you up. Yeah. And the next thing you know, you'll be doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Especially the MDMA. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's probably what I did a lot of. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I did I used a lot of ecstasy when I was younger. Yeah. Um, it'll, it'll, it, it, there's nothing else I can think of that I have done ever in my life in terms of a chemical substance that impacted my judgment more than that. Really? Absolutely. More than alcohol. It doesn't make you as dizzy as alcohol and things like that. Uh, so we're not talking about like motor skill impairment. It does some of that, but mm-hmm. man, that stuff will make you so agreeable to just about anything. You just, you're, you're, you're happy go lucky to the yeah. point of like, oh, well, let's get some ecstasy. We'll just all have like a, a big sleep sleep around party and things like that. And people start fornicating. Next, you know, somebody's pregnant. Somebody's got STDs. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's it. Impairs your. It takes away your resistance to things that you ought to know will hurt you. So what? I mean, if we, what's the t- the takeaway from what you're explaining all this? The takeaway is the reason you're explaining all this yeah. is because whenever you impair your sobriety, mm-hmm. you do a lot of sinful things yeah. that normally you'd know are wrong. Yeah. yeah, you know, like there's a lot of things that when you do that, it leads you down a path that you would have never went down if you were sober. Correct. And I mean, I think that's why, like for instance, First Peter, the Bible tells you how how are you supposed to combat the devil? First Peter chapter five and verse eight: Be sober. Yeah. Be sober. And vigilant. be vigilant. Be sober and watchful. Sober-minded and watchful. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. I think, well, I'm going to jump to a verse in just a second. Ecclesiastes 11, 9. But I think, like, in high school, that is, like, when you're first tempted or become aware of all this different stuff out there. And, you know, everybody's young, and you're like, man, I want to try that. Is it cool? Is it peer pressure? Is it, you know, hard times in life? But um, Ecclesiastes 11, 9 says... Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. So, you know, it says walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes. But that key thing is like knowing that God, you know, he sees everything, and one day you're going to have to account for all that. Yeah, and then the very next verse, he says, Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart. Put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. And I think like we face as young people, and I don't know like what maybe had – would led you to that that area. Um, I know some people have hard times, or like maybe it's just like curiosity. Do you think it's both, or what man, do you think? I just served pleasure, man. Yeah. I wasn't mm-hmm. raised religiously necessarily. I mean, I was taught some basics yeah. about God, some basics about the Bible, but I didn't grow up going to church, going to a Sunday school. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have prayer time before dinner or Bible study. We we just were not religious. 
Yeah. Um, my parents grew up religious, but we weren't by the time I was born and being raised and we didn't go anywhere at all. Yeah. And so it was just, you know, it feels good. Why not? I mean, my parents drank, they smoked. Other people around me did the same thing. Yeah. I tried those first few things I mentioned before. So, I mean, it's just that mentality, that worldview. I mean, there's, I'm not serving an ultimate purpose or end goal of trying to help other people uh, do what's right, to know what's right, to have a good life. I'm not, I'm not trying to serve that goal of making it to heaven, to be with God, to please him. That's, that's the furthest thing from my mind. I'm not thinking about that at all. The only thing I'm thinking about is whether this feels good or bad. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's your God when you're like coming hedonism. from it at that point. And then you yeah. introduce the chemical addiction on top. And that's all you're going to think about. I remember when we were doing a lot of the ecstasy I mentioned, um, some of my friends that I had at the time, they, they, they took their dad's lawnmower and pawned it off. Like, so they could get money for it. I mean, they contemplate how they could steal something or get away with mm-hmm. something or, or deceive somebody out of something so that they could get more. They try to talk you out of spending or into spending your entire paycheck on it because, you know what, oh, it'd be great, it'd be a fun time, man. It's like they don't care that you're mm-hmm. not going to have anything left when the party's over. Yeah. There, was a, <laughs> there was a guy in North Carolina when I lived there. Um, uh, his name is Jerome. He, if he hears this, he won't care that I said this because he's an awesome guy. But I met him in uh, Lowe's parking lot. And um, he, we were talking about just some stuff, and he had a shirt that said something about Jesus on it. So I was like, hey, man, let me talk about your shirt. Well, that led me to become pretty good friends with this guy. And he had um, gotten out of prison recently and went through a rehab program in Raleigh. And I was asking him about how he got into it. And he was a, uh, he was a crack uh, dealer. He had been in hard prison, done hard time for dealing. And um, he was like... I figure he was a scary guy back in the day. I mean, he was still kind of intimidated me then. Um, but I would ask him about, you know, Hey, the people that come up to me in the Walmart parking lot and ask me for money, like, tell me these stories. I said, are they, are they being awesome? Cause he was, him and I went to Walmart once to get something to eat uh, when he moved into his own place. And, um, he liked to eat at Walmart. I don't know. <laughs> he just liked the, the food there. So we were walking back out and this guy came up to us and, um, he's like, Hey, you know, sir, can I have some money? And Jerome's like, no, man, we don't, just, we don't want any of this. I said, Jerome, how do you know that guy's not lying to you? He said, Aaron, in my experience, they're always lying. Because he said when he was addicted to drugs and he was selling, he said he would lie to everybody. He would lie to his girlfriend, to his yeah. family, and he would steal anything all to get drugs to fulfill that high. He said it was literally his number one motivation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when, you're, when your only thought is about getting that next uh, that mm-hmm. good feeling. Because you hit that point. You really do hit that point. I don't care what the substance is. At some point, you've had enough of it to where all you're doing now is just maintaining that addiction. Mm-hmm. You're not getting the great feeling that you had that first time that you, do it, you, you did it anymore. Mm-hmm. That's over. That's gone. Mm-hmm. At this point now, it's a chemical addiction. You have to get it or you start to get sick. Matter of fact, yeah. people die when they withdraw from certain things when they don't get it. I remember that I went through withdrawals, all right? When I decided that I was going to try to do something to help my life be a little better, I made the stupid mistake of thinking I'll switch to a legal drug. Yeah. I don't mean a prescription pill. I mean, at the time, yeah. they had, like, the spice stuff, the K2, oh, yeah. like, the things they sell at the gas station. And you could smoke it and get high. It was legal weed, quote, unquote. Yeah. Um, so I decided, oh, I'll do that. And I quit doing all the illegal stuff. That way I can pass a drug test. I can get a better job. Maybe I can improve my situation. Uh, so I did that. Well, guess what? Uh, when I stopped doing that, uh, I think we were on the way to go and see my sister graduate from like basic training in Oklahoma. On the way back home, okay. I'm going through withdrawals. My parents take me to the hospital. I can't remember anything of that. Yeah. I know at some point I apparently pushed my father. He fell. The hospital has to call the police authorities now. Yeah. The judge commits me. I go for like five weeks mm. uh, while I'm withdrawing into a mental rehabilitation place. Yeah. It wasn't really necessarily mental rehabilitation well, my mom, withdrawing from drugs but yeah i don't even remember those five weeks of my life yeah right um my point is this you hit a point yeah. where you are so addicted to the substance your body thinks it needs it your hormones are so messed up that they can't do right yeah without that regulating them now yeah. mm-hmm. that you'll die yeah. when you come off of it without help my mom's a nurse she's told me some of the things she's had over the years like that sort of yeah know, had to deal with people and it's rough Hey guys, thanks for listening to the show today. We'd like to mention you can download these episodes. They are sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network. We have an app available. You can check that out on Apple or Android devices. And you can stream and listen in to the show and get answers to life's biggest questions. 
So we got about eight minutes left. So now we've talked about kind of what some things lead. You know, the Bible talks about in First John two sixteen, yeah. really the three types of sin: lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Three kind of categories. We've talked about you know these chemical, but let's talk about something Tucker and I have talked about. We're not afraid for other people to know this, but in our past, I mean, when I was in my twenties, I'm thirty five now. Tucker's younger than me. There was a time where I struggled with pornography. Yeah, I mean, it was something that. You're a single guy. You're trying to wait till you find the woman to marry. Mm-hmm. You click on a link on Facebook or the internet. Next thing you know, you're watching something that you've never seen before. Yeah. And it incites that dopamine receptor in your brain because God created us to have sexual desires. The, the right place for that to be fulfilled is yeah. in a marriage. The marriage bed is pure and undefiled. But, you know, that that is also something that's very hard to break. Um, I know that I have a lot of young men now that will hear me talk about it, believe it or not, and they they reach out and they're like, "Hey, man, you'll never believe that I'm I'm struggling with something and it's embarrassing." And I'm like, "Is it pornography?" And they're like, "Uh," I'm like, "Man, I struggle with it too." And they're like, "Okay, yeah, that's what yeah. it is." I'm like, "Dude, I, I've been there. I know what it's like." And there's things you can do to try to combat that. Like um, one I recommend is Covenant Eyes, where I have young guys. Uh, of course, I'm not going to say who they are, yeah. but they sign up on Covenant Eyes. They pay. I'm their accountability partner. When they look at a bad site, it emails me, and I call them or text them. That's awesome. And, you know, normally they're they're upset that they, you know, fallen short, and you say, hey, man, look, did you repent? Did you pray to God? They're already Christians. Mm-hmm. Repent, pray to God, confess it, he'll forgive you, and get back on the horse and try to conquer it, you know. Yeah. And you have to replace it that time with something else that is going to basically take, you know, take over you do. that. And you've got to... You've got to limit your exposure to that thing, sure. whatever it is, whether sure. it's chemical or whether it's something like pornography. Sure, um, you've got to separate yourselves from from certain people sometimes as well. Yeah, First uh, Corinthians fifteen thirty three says what? Um, Be not deceived; evil companionships corrupt good works, right? Yeah, or good morals. Good morals, good habits, good morals. depending on your yeah, translation. The word. That. No, you're fine. Um, the point is, sometimes you have to make a drastic change in your life yeah. in order for you to break away from those things. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's what we're trying to do, right? We want to give you advice on not just saying, here's what addiction is and here's how scary it is, but here's what you can do. So yeah. covenant eyes is a good one yeah. for the chemical stuff, the, yeah. the drug addiction. Sometimes you get to cut that circle out of your life yeah. and start over with yeah. nobody. Yeah. You can't go hang out with the people that are going to do it and think, well, I'm just going to go and I won't do it. Mm-hmm. That's like, you know, that's bad. Yeah. yeah it's I, not going to happen. Yeah. I remember it was middle school and I got, it was the first inappropriate picture being passed around. Yeah. And you know, some of that it's, it's like. I mean, we just live in a sinful world. I mean, yeah. it was middle school and people yeah. were taught passing around. I would say the one regret I have in my life is watching pornography. It's, it is so addicting yeah. and it's just a fake reality. Mm-hmm. Um, God's way is beautiful and the way he designed everything is just, you can't get better than God. Well, what it does too is it objectifies yeah. women. It makes women a thing. Yeah. Not someone that's made in the image of God. One thing too, I think is, I think with pornography, a lot of sins... You think, well, I won't get pulled into that because it's public. So a lot of people think, well, I can do pornography at home mm-hmm. and Nobody no one's going to know. know. Yeah. yeah, you know who knows? Mm-hmm. God. Dude, your yeah. guilt will eat you alive. One of the great yeah. things, like you said, I had one of my great friends where you would text each other, like, you know, text him and say, man, I messed up. And he texts me and said, man, I messed up. And we go get coffee. And yeah. we just, you know, just anything that you can get out of that situation, throw your phone, <laughs> like, you it, know what? run away. Yeah, if you're, fu- if t- okay, the, Jesus talks about if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off, right? If your eyes are causing you to sin, pluck them out. What I think that means, a practical application is, if you struggle with pornography mm-hmm. and Instagram is what sets it on fire, don't take your phone to your room at night and sit on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Delete your Le- Instagram account. Delete your Instagram yeah. account, delete your TikTok, leave your phone in the living room, and go sit, and if that means you stay up and play a good video game till two in the morning and you fall asleep playing it, then do that. But yeah. literally take aggressive action, like you got cancer on your hand, you're going to cut it off, yeah. right? Yeah. If you have that sort of thing in your life, you have to take aggressive action to cut that off. And you have to realize that if you don't, it might send you to hell. That's for yeah. me. When I was in my 20s, I thought, you know what? If I don't get this under control, I might go to hell. And I would listen to sermons. I listened to one Don did, Blackwell, his sermon yeah. on pornography repeatedly and thought, Aaron, if you don't get this under control, you're going to go to hell. And that, that's one thing that helped me, you know, helped me get over it was yeah. realizing if you're not already involved in it yeah. and you need to stay away from it, stay away look, from it, especially Man. the pornography. If yep. you see, once you've seen so much of that, it stays in your mind Yeah, and it doesn't matter how long it's been since yeah. you've looked at it, mm-hmm. you know what it is yep. and it changes and warps your view of the world. Yeah. Yeah. The way that you Definitely. see people is hard to, yeah. hard to carry on conversations with people sometimes yeah. mm-hmm. depending on the situation and where you are and depending on how appropriate they are. Yeah. Look, even as a Christian. If you've done that, 
women of the world still dress certain kinds of ways and yeah. it makes it a much harder struggle for you. You can say, yeah. well, that's on you to figure out. Yeah, it is. And we're yeah. not going to get into the modesty issue right sure, now. But, sure. but the point is, it stays with you. It wars against your soul. First Peter second, uh, first Peter two eleven says, mm-hmm. beloved, I beseech you as sojourners and pilgrims to abstain from fleshly lust, mm-hmm. which war against the soul. And this is a battle. This is a fight that you'll be fighting for the rest of your life is a war that'll go on. And all you're doing is yeah. you're giving reinforcements to the other side to defeat you when you go into these things and you start indulging in them. You're making it that much harder for you to fight it. I agree. I remember what Job said. Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes not to look on a young maiden. Yeah. For me, I have to memorize scripture. I mean, that's for me. And obviously, you know, I would sit there and think, hey, what does the Bible say? What are passages I can memorize? You know, Job says, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look at a young woman. I can tell you right now, when I go to Target and there's a pretty girl that walks by, that's the first verse that pops into my head and I look at the ceiling. That's it. That's Floor, it. ceiling, away. Yeah, bounce the eyes. That's what yeah. I heard, I've heard. i heard people say. You see something? That, now, there's, it's not sinful to say that's a pretty woman, right? It's sinful whenever James chapter 1, you start dwelling on it, that desire grows and it moves to lust. Exactly. And Every so, time yeah. I'm around... Um, women that yeah. I, I have I interact with sure. and I make it a point always stare look right into their eyes yep. mm-hmm. especially if it's somebody who's of the world and they 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 dress in a revealing way that yeah. shows off certain things yeah it takes conscious willful effort mm-hmm. to make sure that I don't give in to any temptation to look mm-hmm. at them in a different kind of way that I would have done when yeah. I was younger when I was involved in that lifestyle Jesus said, I, I've heard people say, you know, the whole idea, well, I can look, I just can't touch. Jesus said this. This is what Matt, Jesus said in Matthew chapter uh, 5. You have heard, verse 27, you've heard it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. I think what Jesus is getting at here is everything you do in your life, your actions, it starts where? Yeah. In your heart. Your mind. We know what you mean. Or in your mind. Yeah, it starts in your <laughs> heart, which is the, the seat of your thinking, your mind. Mm-hmm. It starts there. If you corrupt this, the rest of your life, your actions are going to follow, follow mm-hmm. suit. And so we're literally down to one minute. Um, I would say if you're looking, if you have an issue like that, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verses 13 and 14. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. Solomon, David, dealt with women, okay? Uh, but God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with the temptation, he will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Yeah. Now, what is that way of escape? It may be a Christian brother or sister. It may be a rehab pro- program. Yep. It may be something that God has providentially uh, increased or introduced. It but may be throwing your phone in the river. It may be throwing it your phone be. in the river. There That's is right. a way out. It may be going back to the mm-hmm. flip phone. Yeah. Yep. But just remember that you can overcome this stuff with God. Mm-hmm. And But you have to take action. Yeah. You know, you can pray about it, but you also have to take action on your own part. So um, we got about 20 seconds left. We are not doctors. We're just three guys that have experienced things in our own life that we all regret. We wish we could go back and never do it, but we did it. Yeah. And so now all we can do is we became Christians. We repented, confessed. We were baptized. We had our sins washed away. And now we do our best to walk in the light, which is what we're going to talk about in one of the next episodes. So thank you for watching the Authentic Christian Podcast, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast has been sponsored by GBN, Gospel Broadcasting Network. You can download the app and start streaming every show, watch every episode, and discover the answers to life's biggest questions today.